this is it. <laughs> Nothing counts to this in the museum. myself. Well, Hospital Porter's pride and dignity. Stop the new world order. Welcome to Panwo TV. That's probably the longest um, you've heard me stay silent for quite a long time. Um, that was the old cathedral at Coventry I just showed you. And I didn't feel like doing any sort of commentary in there because um, basically uh, it's, it's got a very, very poignant memorial-like atmosphere. It was like a tomb or a mausoleum and I just didn't feel I should speak in there. I was thinking twice about even filming in there. I went around there once actually and I had the, I had the camera on zoom and I messed up the whole shot. I've gone around there again and I think I haven't like, touched the zoom button. Um, it's a, that's, the, that's the old cathedral there, see? That's the old cathedral. Um, what happened was, it's like a, it's an old medieval cathedral, dates back to the uh, 14th century. And, um, but in 1940, it was destroyed, along with much of Coventry, by uh, the Blitz, by, the, by an air raid. Um, it's completely gutted by fire, um, and what you have in there is definitely a war memorial. It's um, as well. It's it's as much a war memorial as anything. You probably saw the poppy wreath, but it's a war. It's a war memorial like no other I've ever, like no other I've ever seen. I mean, you may have seen my 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 Remembrance Sunday video where I visit the war memorial in Oxford, and I say I tell you that I don't like getting involved in this war memorial culture. Well, this one's very different. This is some. Um, you have, um, you, should, you might have seen the statue there, the reconciliation statue. Um, there are two of those made, it said on, the, I think. Um, one was put up here, another in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, I think, one of those two places. Um, as a, not as a glorification of victory, of good guys against bad guys, but or of sacrifice for country, but as a, as a statement about the destructiveness of humanity and the, and the power of the quest for peace and how it could, the quest for peace, reconciliation, forgiveness in the Christian sense but also as much in 
in, in, in the secular sense, can overcome that drive for war and that misplaced patriotism and other things, you know? And um, you might see there's that, uh, the cross, I mean, they still got the crucifix. That big charred crucifix was one of the few things rescued from the, from the burning wreckage. Um, and it's, as you see here, this is still a, this, they built part of the university on here, but it's still a cemetery. They've just kept, kept the tombstones up. This is part of the quad of the university, which is just next door. Uh, and there's been a lot. There's been a lot of development on this site since 1940. Um, not least the new cathedral. Now I'll see if I can get a better shot of it because it's um, Coventry Cathedral. There, see. And this was started in 1956 and finished in 1962. And here it is. The foundation stone was laid by the Queen, and it was opened by the Queen. Now. First thing that strikes you about this is it's unusual kind of, I suppose it's, it's sort of postmodern or pre-modern or peri-modern or pseudo-modern. I don't know what you call these things, but um, that's, obviously it's, a mo it's done in the modern style. It's not an attempt to recreate the sort of gothic or more normal or whatever style of that cathedral. First thing that strikes you is um, as you enter the cathedral grounds, you see these big black balls of rock lying on the ground. Now, I don't know what they're there for. I wonder if anyone's tempted to push one and get it rolling. <laughs> to me, they look like cannon shots, which is not a very, um, very, very different uh, message to the uh, anti-war message you saw inside the cathedral. Um, and uh, the cathedral here is, it's called the Cathedral of, of, uh, of St. Michael, who's also the Archangel Michael. And here you have very, very strange looking bronze of Michael standing above the defeated Satan with his weapon in his hand. Very, uh, a symbol of very sort of like a uh, masculine kind of virile, virile victory. Rather like what we saw at Blending Palace, if you remember the film I made there. Uh, there's, of course, there's the new cross up there. And this is the cathedral, you see it goes along there. Um, can't get in there today, it's, it's, it's shut, but... Uh, I, 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 I did go in here once, I actually, actually have been there before. I didn't know I was... I didn't realise, uh, but I have actually been to Coventry before, because I remember going inside the cathedral. Um, it's uh, quite a stark contrast, actually, in terms of... Not only in terms of the, the period and the construction of the buildings, you know, but in, in terms of style and also in terms of uh, their ambiance, very, very, um, very great contrast. One's built right in front of the other. The new one's built right outside the old one. And you have here this, this old cathedral, which is filled with very sort of like uh, poignant, you know, things like that, like that statue I showed, you, like the statue, the Hiroshima statue, and the and the nails. They 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 took nails from the from the records and they sent them to the cities in Berlin, and it's. And Kiel and Dresden and other places. It's often it's often forgotten that um, the blitz we suffered in this country was as terrible as it was was minuscule compared to what happened to Germany. Um, I think World War Two more than any other has been portrayed by history as a sort of battle of good against evil. The good guys are the Allies fighting for democracy and freedom against the evil Nazi tyranny. Um, in fact, as far as I can see, that, that war, like almost every other war I've studied in history, has been not a case of good guys against bad guys at all, but a case of bad guys against bad guys. Um, it's worth remembering, you know, that many, many more Axis, ca Axis casualties were far higher than Allied casualties, and um, as I've just said what I said about the Blitz, I mean, if you look at the film taken and the photographs of Germany after 1945, uh, it's it's like a, a lunar landscape. It's like a nuclear holocaust. I've got a I've got a friend actually who was a soldier who served in Germany. He took part in the D-Day landings and he served in Germany in the post-war period. In, and um, he fought against SS guerrillas. 
and he said you know that there was there's piles of rubble that took they were still clearing them at the time of the millennium some of the rubble and the bots and millions of bodies have never been recovered but he could smell them he could smell them under the rubble and there's no point digging them out and burying them it's just there were millions of them mil millions of people dead by bombs from the allied side and um and if i've been to germany right and long long time ago when i was a kid but um one thing that's immediately um struck me was that uh was that all the buildings look quite modern compared to Britain. And the reason is because they are. Because they're all post... Nearly all the buildings are post-war. Why? Because nearly all of them were destroyed in the war. So, uh, that's another reason why I don't like... I don't like war memorials generally. With the exception of the one in the old Coventry Cathedral. You know, it's not a war memorial at all. It's a peace memorial. It's a, it's, a, it's a statement of the commitment of humanity to end. There's no glorification of war in there. And I really, really like that. Anyway, that is two Coventry cathedrals there for you. Um, now, I'm, uh, I'm, actually here to, I'm actually here to do some work. I've, uh, I've uh, got to earn, earn a bit of money. I felt a bit embarrassed just now, actually, because you might have heard a, a homeless man walk past me and ask me for some money. And I said, well, I'm looking for some myself, because I am. Um, I'm actually down to my last three pounds now. Um, I've, got to, uh, I've got enough for a sandwich, and then I'm going to start work, and, um, and hopefully I'll be about 200, 300 pound richer by the by Wednesday. Um, now I don't want you to feel sorry for me, all right? And I don't feel sorry for myself. I'm, you know, as I've said before, and I've said it again, I'm very, very well off compared to some. I mean, compared to Tony Farrell, I'm very, very lucky. Compared to Kevin Annett, I'm very, very lucky. Um, but. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a job, I'm going to do a spring clean on someone's house and um, and that should be, uh, you know, that will be, uh, that'll be quite, it'll be good fun, it's a couple of days hard work, I'll be staying in a working men's hostel, it's pretty, pretty basic actually, I've just been to see it, it's pretty rudimentary, bunk beds, you know, shared toilet and stuff like that, but it, the client is paying for it, so I'm not complaining. Like I said, I'm, I'm also I'm not a materialistic person anymore. I'm, I, I've understood I think that there is, there's much more to life than money. And, and I, despite what I just said, I'm down to my last three quid. There's not a single day since I got sacked when I have not had a meal. I've never been seriously hungry. And that's more than some people can say. I mean, I wouldn't want to pry, but I bet Tony Farrell has. And of course, there's millions of other people who have. What's more. Every, every day since I got sacked from portering, I've had a roof over my head. I've not been homeless once. I've got a very nice landlord, like I said. Um, so, that was the Coventry Cathedrals there. And now I have to get to work. And I'll see you when I get back online. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Hospital Port has pride and dignity. Stop the New World Order.